Hey everybody, it's Glenn back with another Clash Royale analysis video. It's been fun breaking down a lot of the games that have happened in the Orange Crown League playoffs. We got one more to take a look at, and it's the one that capped it off. Featuring one Hive Hunter from Intech Tenerife Titans and Juan Manuel of Q-Lash. Hunter trying to finish it off right here, and... He's using the lineup that I've been trying out uh, recently. I've seen it uh, grow in popularity over about the last month or so. And it's uh, the Double Barrel Princess lineup. I, I've really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed trying to, to master it. It's, it's really tough. And especially we see here that uh, Juan Manuel is, is countering with Golem. So let's break it down right now. So they cut into the game a little bit early on. And Hunter brings in Dart and a Knight to stop it. I thought that was interesting that uh, Hunter played the barrel to the right instead of splitting splitting the tower. Like almost everybody that split the tower. But he played it to the right. Now he must have known that uh, Juan Manuel had a had a barbarian barrel. So by doing that, as we see here, some damage is done to the tower and Hunter takes the lead. That Dark Goblin got some massive value. That's what I like about this lineup is that when you can play Dark Goblin and Princess in the back and they can stay alive as long as possible, it's just some super good value. As we see here, with the prince played right at the back of the king tower, this gives her plenty of time to start taking shots. You can play stuff up front, like those skeletons right there, and you can cycle through. Hunter must have sensed at this point that that there is a there's a golem waiting at some point. So he's trying to keep that dark goblin alive and almost pulls it off, but that that night witch comes in, and now you got to worry about. The golem, but meanwhile, that skeleton, that skeleton barrel got some massive damage. Let's take a look at that before uh, we continue here. So the skeleton barrel comes in, and there goes the dark goblin. So my eyes were all on the dark goblin because I was imagining, oh, this this baby, this baby dragon to take care of this skeleton barrel. Too easy, right? Well, there was nobody else on defense, and that skeleton barrel did a ton of damage. I was guessing at this point that perhaps. Juan Manuel was thinking, okay, this is the opportunity to bring in Golem. Let's not play. Let's just eat the damage and let's not play anything else at this point. Well, the tower went from over a thousand to 600. I mean, it was, that was a heavy, heavy decision at the time. And I think this really shifted the game Hunter's way because now he could just keep on applying pressure. Now there's no spells. I mean, other than, than law. And that's a miss uh, on that Barbarian Barrel right there by Juan Manuel. And it looks like Hunter's going to have a fairly simple time closing this one out. Or so I thought. So, so Juan Manuel brings in a cage, but the Skeleton Barrel can easily duck that. And here comes the Golem. There goes the, there goes the tower. Juan Manuel lets it go, which makes sense because this is his moment right here to, to get back into the game. You got a full, fully healthy golem and a dark goblin and a princess. This is a great opportunity, except that tornado right there brings everybody in. The only problem with this tornado is that this night... Is still in front of the Dark Goblin and the Princess. So yeah, everybody took some damage off of the tornado, but this knight is still gonna be able to get in front of this in front of this Dark Goblin and this Princess if this Night Witch or whoever else needs to needs to uh you know or wants to take down both of these these shooters right here. And we got a bomb tower. So we see it right there. That that's that's why that moment, I mean, this, this tornado was good, but not quite good enough. 
So Dark Goblin comes in. And the knight stays in front. Now he still stays in front. And that barrel comes in. And it looks like it's going to go after Dark Goblin. But instead, those skeletons and the knight come in and save the day. But it looks like another golem's coming in. I had to look at this twice. I was like, oh, did the, did the golem stay fully healthy? Nope, that's a second golem. And that bomb tower does its job. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a champion. And it's Intech Tenerife Titans. It, what, a, what a finish. I mean, I really like this lineup. Because you could just throw a bunch of... Of, not throw a bunch of stuff on the wall, but uh, you can try to, you, know, you could just keep on applying pressure. Like even, even, let's say this golem came in. Let's say there was like 40 seconds left. And this golem was fully healthy and still come in. This barrel is still doing some damage <laughs> right here on the tower up here. So even if this game continued, 100 is going to be way in the lead. That's why I like this lineup because... It's just constant pressure, and you have two really great defenders. Now, they're paperweights. I mean, not paperweights, but they're very they're very light. I mean, a fireball can take any of them out, but that's kind of the, the idea. Is if one's on the board, you kind of separate them both. What I like to do is I like to have one on each side of the, of the king tower. Um, so that, like, if we look at how it was played over here with... The bomb tower, especially against this golem, I like to have one of the shooters over here on this other side. Because if there's a case like where this tornado was played, then this other shooter right here would be fine and still attacking this golem over here. But in the case of what Hunter did, it still worked out because he had skeletons that were going to block out the dark goblin and the princess. I mean, just some, just some really great, amazing play, and you got now you got three shooters here with the healthy knight, and that tornado wipes them out. But it's already too late because you got another shooter and dark goblin coming in, and that's going to do it. So, congrats to Intech Tenerife Titans. Congrats to Hunter on the championship. Let's take a look at the stats uh, before we close it out here. Like, didn't even use lightning. I mean, Lightning probably would have cleaned up, but there were so many, so many troops on the board on Hunter's side that uh, it would have been tough to, to break, still break through. If we look at the pos position of the Princess and the Dark Goblin, they're all played in the back except for the one right here that was trying to complement the Knight that uh, pushed up front here. Great pressure on these... Um, Skeleton, uh, skeleton barrel and the goblin barrel. Only two of them. I, I've tended to play a lot of goblin barrel the moment I, uh, moment it's in the rotation. I, I just throw it out there just to keep pressure on uh, my opponents. If we take a look at the stats from the last game here, we have a, a good amount of uh, usage in this uh, based on these two lineups, and it is. Almost 50-50, <laughs> I would say. Almost 50-50. It's very close. Uh, but if we get to six cards or more, which is mostly this log bay here versus this golem here, uh, you just swap swap out uh, perhaps a lumberjack here and uh, a, a, another build or a different building instead of a tornado or cage. Then it favors uh, the golem lineup. But... Uh, I mean, good job by Hunter to to really put this put this lineup to use. I, I I tried this lineup the other day, and I was like, okay, I am definitely wanting to learn this like in and out because it is really fun to play with, and it ended up winning a title for uh, Intech Tenerife Titan. So you know, perhaps it'll win a title for you if you're thinking about uh, switching to this type of lineup. So I'm gonna end the video right here. It's been like I said, it's been fun. Breaking down a lot of the game from the Orange Crown League. Congrats to Insect Tenerife Titans. I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like. Be sure to hit the subscribe wherever you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next video.